The Scapegoating Narcissistic Mother by Gail Myers, Part 1. The children are often assigned rigid roles in toxic, dysfunctional families where alcoholism, childhood sexual abuse or mental illness is an everyday reality. The assignment of these roles often happens early in childhood, long before the child could possibly have any idea what is truly happening or why. However, even young children quickly understand the unwritten toxic family rules. These rigid rules and toxic rules are taken very seriously because they are required in order for the closed toxic system to survive and continue. So when you try to get out of your role, to shed this false image that has been forced upon you, the whole family system will often go to extremes to put you back in your place. Why a narcissistic mother needs a scapegoat? The scapegoat and the golden child are two of the most widely discussed rigid toxic family roles. Neither of these children are loved or valued for who they truly are, but for the purpose they serve the narcissistic mother. The Golden Child The golden child's purpose is to reflect all that is good back to the narcissist. He is showing the world she must be a good mother to have such a child as this. Narcissistic mom will rewrite history or twist reality beyond all recognition to cause everything this child does to be deemed exceedingly wonderful. This is mom's mini-me, a narcissist in training. This reflection of her grandeur is one of the real reasons this child can do no wrong in her eyes. Of course, this extreme favoritism causes anger, strife and even severed relationships between siblings. Thoughts fine with narcissistic mother who wants to be the hub in the middle, dividing and conquering her children in order to maintain control and the flow of information. She will intentionally pit the golden child against the scapegoat by manipulation. She may even use the golden child, as well as the other children, to inflict abuse by proxy on the scapegoat child. Then, she will garner as much pity as possible by proclaiming how she must endure these contrary children. The Scapegoat Child Narcissistic mother chronically avoids personal responsibility and accountability, thus a scapegoat child. The scapegoat is the truth-teller in the midst of this great pretender's sticky web of lies, secrets and pretense. The scapegoat child can do no right in the eyes of the narcissist and often can do no right in the eyes of the entire family. So it is for truth lovers among pretenders and liars. The other children quickly learn it is okay for them to blame the scapegoat too. As the cunning narcissistic mother skillfully manipulates every member of the family, she will rewrite history or twist reality beyond all recognition to be sure this child takes the blame. This is in order for the narcissistic mother, as well as the entire family, to maintain a facade of normalcy and health while pointing at the scapegoat as the problem. It is smoke and mirrors, a distraction directing attention toward a symptom of the ish rather than the real culprit. The scapegoat provides a distraction, a sleight of hand. How do you know if you are the scapegoat? You may have long ago realized you are the scapegoat or you may be just beginning to realize the reality of the situation. Either way, do not beat yourself up about it. Denial helped us survive abusive childhoods. Some indications of being the scapegoat are You are the truth teller, you are blamed for things you have no control over or were not your fault. You are the target of false accusations accused, lied and gossiped about, you are labeled the troublemaker. You are left out of or the last to learn of family business or news, you are always the first to apologize and forgive, even when you are the one who truly deserves the apology, your accomplishments are ignored, sabotaged or invalidated. You are accused of being selfish when you take care of yourself or if you do not meet even ridiculous demands, you may be accused of being unstable, dishonest or crazy, you may be shunned or ostracized. Even with all of the above, you may be the one everyone runs to in crisis. The History of the Scapegoat Most of us have heard the term and understand the popular use of the word, but the idea of a scapegoat has a long history. There is some mention of a scapegoat right in ancient Greece. However, our current use of the word comes from the English translation of the Hebrew term from the Bible. Our current usage literally means an individual, group or country singled out for unmerited negative treatment or blame. The Bible documents the use of a scapegoat dating back to the accounts of the children of Israel. In Leviticus 16, 
the scapegoat was an actual goat. The sins of the people were ceremonially placed on the head of the goat, then the goat was cast out of the community and into the desert alone to symbolize the removal of sin and guilt. If you are the scapegoat son or daughter of a narcissistic mother, you may know just exactly how that feels. In the Bible the forgiveness of sin required these animal sacrifices before Christ died a sacrificial death on the cross, but that requirement ended at the cross. The New Testament, after Christ, view holds that Christ took the sins of humanity on his own head. The law was given, not that any man could keep the whole of the law, but for man to come to the conclusion he is unable to. Thus, the law points to the need for a Savior. Christ is the Savior who fulfilled the law placing us under grace. He is the only one who can wash away sins. There is no longer any need for scapegoats. We are each accountable before God for our own actions. Why am I the scapegoat? The very first thing the scapegoat needs to understand is it is not your fault. The very existence of a scapegoat in the family signals a problem because a scapegoat is only required in a family when someone chronically refuses to take responsibility for their actions. You did not cause it and you cannot fix it. What you can do is recognize it and protect yourself. Scapegoating is a reflection on the person refusing to take responsibility or be held accountable, not the person being blamed. The scapegoat also provides a buffer against reality to support the family denial. The scapegoat carries the lion's share of the blame, shame, Anger and rejection so narcissistic mother can maintain her patterns of dysfunction while continuing to appear normal. However, the scapegoats are the strongest, nicest, most honest and emotionally healthiest ones in the family. The scapegoat suffers more abuse, rejection and shame than the rest of the family put together. So never doubt your strength but also realize it is okay to ask for help. You are strong enough to survive and you are certainly strong enough to recover. Since it is very painful to be the scapegoat, the scapegoat is usually the one in the family who will go looking for answers and find them. Thus, scapegoats are more likely to escape, heal and go on to lead healthier lives. It was never your fault, scapegoat. A scapegoat allows someone or an entire family to project everything that is negative onto the scapegoat in order for them to continue to appear normal. It is a distraction, a red herring. The whole family can then point at the scapegoat as the problem and focus the attention away from the true core issue. This can be reinforced in many overt and covert ways. It may be verbally being told your family wants the best for you, but their actions do not match their words. For example, Telling you they support you getting an education, but then actively sabotaging or undermining your attempts to do so. There's a heavy investment in keeping you in your assigned role as the bad scapegoat. So you might think you will become an overachiever to prove to your family and the world you are not bad. However, narcissistic mother needs a bad scapegoat in order to support the denial and facade. So when you start to excel it actually makes narcissistic mother uncomfortable because it threatens her assessment of you. She may very well also become jealous of any success you have. So, narcissist mother may actually reward her scapegoats for floundering, failing or getting in a mess. This can be done in very subtle ways so as to remain deniable and undetected, while she also actively undermines any success in every way she is able to.